by the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, celebrating 40 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Today, Andrew illustrates the power of God's Word to change our lives in his teaching, Spirit, Soul, and Body. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a teaching on spirit, soul, and body, the truth that God used to just transform my life. I've never gotten over it. Here I am 40 years later still excited by the things that God has spoken to me. I pray that this teaching has been exciting to you. You know, I'm not um, as exciting as a lot of ministers as far as I don't stand and scream and shout. You know, we've actually aired some programs before where they've seen me standing and walking and preaching and I've had people ride in and think that I was paralyzed is the reason I sit in a chair. And uh, you know what, I'm just not a real animated person. And uh, I have probably one of the biggest uh, statements that I get, people say that they passed me on television for months and eventually just something told them to stop and listen and once they start listening they like it. But you know, most people are looking for somebody who's screaming and shouting and sweating and wiping their sweat off their brow, and they want somebody who's talking in a gravelly voice, and they're wanting them to say, glory to God. And I just don't have any of the trappings that many people associate with being anointed. So anyway, sometimes I have to make this clear and say it, but you know, this teaching... It may not have all of the bells and the whistles that some of you like, but I promise you this teaching would change your life. You know, I'd just like to challenge you. I'd like to challenge you to take this teaching, the materials that we're offering, study this, and I would nearly defy you to study this teaching and not come out turned on and excited about God in a way that you've never been before. I really believe it's that powerful. And, you know, also, this would be a great way for you to take somebody else and just issue that challenge to them. Just say, listen to this, study this, read through it, and see if it doesn't light their fire. I tell you, if this doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. It's the way I believe it. So I've been sharing some powerful, powerful things. Yesterday, I started sharing that when you got born again in your spirit, you were given supernatural faith, not human faith. I believe that it's important for you to recognize that there is a physical, natural type of faith, but that's all limited to what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, your five senses. You can't use just human faith for spiritual results because the spirit realm, you can't perceive with your five senses. There is a supernatural God kind of faith that according to Romans chapter 4, God calls those things which be not as though they are. And you need God's supernatural faith operating in you. And here's the good news. When you got born again, you got born again using God's supernatural faith. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's a number of ways that you can interpret that not of yourselves, but I believe an accurate way is to say that the faith that you used to receive the grace of God was not of yourselves, but you literally had God impart to you His faith, supernatural faith. Well, that's powerful. And again, I... I can say that it has to be that way because human faith is limited to what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. For instance, when you sit in a chair, you are using human faith because you see that chair, because you see the person that you went into their house and you trust them. There's these physical, natural things that you trust. But when it comes to believing for salvation, you're believing for things that you can't see. How can you do that? You can't do it if you're only using a human faith. No, it's a supernatural faith. And the good news is that the supernatural faith that was imparted unto you at salvation, it doesn't expire. It doesn't evaporate. It doesn't just dissipate after a certain time. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Romans chapter 11, I believe it's verse 26 or 29, says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Faith is a gift of God. You are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. And it does not 
ever go away. God never repents. He doesn't take it back. Now, at times you feel like you've got faith, and other times you feel like you've got unbelief. Somebody might say it's more than just feeling. I'm absolutely sure I've got unbelief. I am terrified at what the doctor said or terrified about what this banker said or this collection agency said or terrified about, you know, something. And you say, I've got fear. But the truth is, in your spirit, you've always got faith. And here's one of the great truths that I've learned through this is that I'm aware that now in my spirit, I have things and I have potential that I can't always feel. And, you know, in the past, before I understood this, I would come up against something and, and I would need to believe and I would search my emotions, search my heart, and if I couldn't feel faith, then I'd think, well, I just don't have it. And I'd basically give up, not doubting that God could do it, not doubting that faith is the victory that overcomes the world, but I'd just say, I just don't have any. Now I've come to realize that in my spirit, I've got faith. It says in Galatians 5.22 that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Faith is a fruit of the spirit, and the spirit bears this fruit 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. There are no seasons where the spirit isn't producing faith. Faith is in there, and now because of that, you know what? When I confront a situation and I don't feel any faith, I still believe I've got it because that's what God's Word says. And I have acted in faith at times when I felt nothing. I have stood and spoken to people when honestly, if I was to go by what I feel, I would say that this person's going to die. I didn't feel a thing. And yet I'm smart enough now. I've renewed my mind to the degree that I know not to speak out just what I feel. I know that when I am saying God's Word that actually I'm operating in the higher realm of faith because I'm going against all of my feelings. And I have seen great miracles happen through this. So this is what I'm trying to share with you, that you do have the faith of the Son of God in your born-again spirit. You don't have to ask for faith. You've already got it. You just need to, first of all, believe that it's there. Acknowledge it. That's 90% of the battle right there. And then after you acknowledge it, you have to learn the principles of how faith works and begin to start cooperating with it. But it'll work. But it won't work if you, first of all, don't believe that you've got it. And I, I meet a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people. And I, I would say that the vast majority of people believe that faith works. They just don't believe they have any. And Christians are praying and saying, Oh, God, give me more faith. You don't need more faith. You might need more faith operative, you might learn how to use your faith better, but you have the faith of the Son of God living on the inside of you. Let me read this passage to you out of Romans chapter 12. And in verse 3, it says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, here in the King James Bible, it says God dealt to every man the measure of faith, a definite article, the, signifying a certain amount, the measure of faith. It is not a measure of faith. Now, there, I'm aware that there are some versions, you know, the reverse standard version. And <laughs> anyway... I'm not going to go into all of that, but I'm aware that there are other translations that say this differently, but I'm going to show this to you from a number of passages of Scripture over in uh, Galatians chapter 2 and 2 Peter chapter 1 and other places. There's a number of different places in the Word that verify that every born-again believer was given the exact same amount of faith. Now, I don't know about you, but boy, that made a huge impact on me. You know, when I first got to really seeking the Lord, I didn't doubt that God was real, and I didn't doubt that faith worked. And when I heard other people talk about how that they had seen great miracles happen and how they had believed God, I rejoiced at that, and I thought, man, that's what faith has the potential of doing. I didn't doubt any of that stuff. I just doubted that I had it. And I spent a lot of time asking God for faith. As a matter of fact, I don't want to teach on this because it would take the rest of this program, and I'm wanting to continue right where I am, but... 
Let me just quickly mention that in Luke chapter 17, the disciples asked Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. And he came back and he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say unto a sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root and cast into the sea and it would obey you. And then he goes into a parable about a slave saying, you don't tell your slave to come in and sit down and eat first and I hope I'm not imposing on you and would you please do something for me? No, he says you use that slave. And basically, I think the point that he's making is, you don't need more faith. The disciples were saying, Lord, increase our faith. He says, you don't need more faith. If your faith is only that big, like a grain of mustard seed, that's enough to do an unthinkable miracle nearly. You just aren't using what you've got. Boy, that's a powerful statement. And yet, I see people all of the time, just like me, saying, God, I know faith works, but God, I just... Don't have any of it. Please give me more faith. No, you've got it. This says you were dealt the measure of faith. It's not like God gave you one measure and me one measure and somebody else another measure and we've all got these varying amounts of faith. When you got born again, the point that I was making on my program yesterday, you were saved not by your own faith in Jesus, but God had to literally give you his faith. You were so bankrupt that you couldn't even believe the good news that Jesus has died for you. That's nearly too good to be true news. And you weren't there to see Jesus crucified. And with just human faith, you can't believe anything beyond your five senses' ability to verify and prove. When you got born again, you had to believe for things that you couldn't see, that you couldn't feel. How can you do that? You can do it because God gave you his supernatural faith, the measure of faith. And that faith is still present, and you need to start acknowledging that you have it and start using it. You know, if we were having like a soup line or something, a soup kitchen, and you were coming by, and if you had a bowl, and if I had this huge pot of soup, and if I had, you know, a ladle that I was dishing that soup out with, if I only had one measure, one instrument to dish that soup out, then everybody would get the measure. But if I used a ladle... For some people, and then the next person, I used an eyedropper, and the next person, I used a spoon, a teaspoon, then a tablespoon. Or, you know, if I had all of these different things, and if people came by, well, then people would get different amount of soups. But if I only had one measure, the measure, then everybody would get the same amount of soup. This says that God has dealt to every born-again believer the measure of faith. There aren't different amounts of faith. Now, people use varying amounts of faith. Some people use what they've got. Other people don't use what they have because, first of all, they don't know it. That's the reason I'm telling you these truths and trying to get it across, that you have the faith of the Son of God living on the inside of you. There, people use varying amounts of faith, but the truth is every one of us was given the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. That transformed my life. You know, the very first teaching tape that I ever put out, before it was on cassette tape, it was on reel to reel, was a tape entitled, The Faith of God. That's a teaching that I made back around, I think it was 1976. And uh, this has been a truth that has been operative in my life, and I can trace it all back to this understanding of spirit, soul, and body, that in my spirit I have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, God began to show me that I didn't need to go get faith. It was in my spirit. I needed to renew my mind. First of all, believe I had it, learn what the laws are that govern it, and just begin to use what I've got. You know, I had a car one time. The very first car that I ever owned was a family car that was getting old. It was over 10 years old. It was a 1957 Chrysler. It's one that had those fins on it. I used to call it my Batmobile. And it had a push-button drive over here, and it was a Hemi engine. But the thing uh, was getting pretty old. And anyway, I just ran it until the wheels nearly came off of that thing. And I was very limited in my mechanical ability. And anyway, that thing got to where it would uh, not start, or sometimes it would be driving, and it would just die. And I put new solenoids on it. I put new starters on it. I did everything that I knew to do. And finally... I just wound up giving this thing away. I got me a new car, and I gave it away to a guy. And when he got that, you know what? It turned out that all that was wrong, there was a loose wire. 
that wasn't allowing the battery to be recharged. The uh, alternator on it wasn't working. And this is, you know, uh, it's different now. They don't even have these on cars. But the alternator would recharge the battery and do all of this stuff. And there was a loose wire that wasn't allowing the charge to flow. But everything was there that it took. There was just a loose connection. And, you know, I've often thought about it that this is really a pretty good description of what's happening in people's lives. They're thinking that something is deadly wrong and they're, 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 uh, Christianity just doesn't work. But God has given you everything it takes. They're just a loose wire up here. You just don't know something. You aren't thinking properly. If you're praying and asking God to give you more faith, you've got a loose wire somewhere. You don't need more faith. You've already been given the faith of the Son of God. There's just one measure, and so you've got the same measure as everybody else. Look what the uh, Apostle Peter said over here in 2 Peter chapter 1, and verse 1. He says, Simon Peter, and a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter said, I am writing to those who have like precious faith. And notice it says, have obtained. That means it's past tense. You've already got like precious faith. That doesn't mean that it's just similar. It means that it's the same faith. If you study these words out in the Greek, it's meaning that you've got exactly what I've got. Now, the apostle Peter, his faith was so strong that over in the book of Acts, you can read about it. I believe it was Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5 right there. It says that he would walk along and his shadow would fall on people and people would be healed by just his shadow touching them. You know what? You've got that same faith. That's what he says. He's writing to people that have obtained like precious faith. Somebody says, well, I don't have that faith. Well, then just tear 2 Peter out of your Bible. It's not for you then. He says, I'm writing to people that have obtained like precious faith. If you're saying that I don't have that, well, then you don't have access to this book. Of course, I'm not encouraging you to tear this out of your Bible. What I'm encouraging you to do is to change your thinking, to line up with the Word of God and recognize you do have in your spirit the exact same faith that the Apostle Peter had. You've got the same faith that he used when he raised Dorcas from the dead. There's not two measures of faith. There wasn't Peter got a huge amount of faith and you got a little bit of faith. We were all given the exact same faith Peter might have used his faith better than you and I use it, but you and I have the exact same faith that the Apostle Peter used. I don't know about you, but when I saw this, instantly what I was believing for, what I was expecting increased. I quit believing for nothing. You know, there's a lot of people that just are afraid to believe for anything because they might be disappointed. So therefore, rather than run the risk of being disappointed, they're just shooting at nothing and hitting it every time. But when you start believing in the supernatural power of God, boy, it made me start saying, well, then I want to see everything that Peter saw. I want to see a man like at the gate of the temple just lame for 38 years. I want to raise him up and see him walk. I want to see a person raised from the dead. I want to see miracles. I want to have boldness to be able to stand in front of people who criticize me and have the ability to kill me and sit there and be unflinching and unyielding and just non-compromise and speak the truth. And you know what? I can't say that I've arrived yet, but I am seeing these things happen. Back when I first made this decision, back when the Lord first showed me these truths, I had never seen a single person heal. Matter of fact, back when I first started believing these things, did you know I was told that miracles passed away with the apostles and that there hadn't been anybody healed, there hadn't been any miraculous things like what we see in the Bible for the last 2,000 years, that that quit after the last apostle died. And yet I began to learn these truths. And you know what? I saw in Sigaville, Texas, a woman who was blind, healed. I started seeing miracles. I saw a person speak who didn't have any vocal cords. They'd been cut out, and I laid hands on them and commanded the healing power of God. And I started seeing miracles, and I started seeing things happen, and as far as I knew, those were the first miracles that had taken place in 2,000 years. Now, since that time, I've come to realize that I was in a camp where there was a lot of unbelief, 
And that's the reason I had that impression. I found out that, man, miracles have been happening ever since, and there was a lot of people believing in seeing the power of God. But my point is that once I saw this in the Word and once that I realized that I had the same faith that Peter had, the same faith that Paul had, the same faith that Jesus had when he raised Lazarus from the dead, when he walked on water, when I realized that I had this faith, it wasn't out there and I could pray and ask for it, but it was in me. It was all there, and the only thing that was wrong was I just had a wire loose in my brain. Something wasn't connecting. Something wasn't clicking. I determined I was going to renew my mind, and instantly I started seeing miracles happen. I know that there's some of you that have been taught just like I was that these things don't happen. I'm here to testify that they do happen. I'm here to say that, Paul, that the Apostle Peter says he's writing this book to those who have like precious faith. There are many of you who'd say, oh, I'd never say that. Well, then you can't claim anything out of 2 Peter because it was written to those people. You either have to humble yourself and admit and receive this faith as a gift or you have to quit believing 2 Peter. And notice it goes on to say in this verse that to those who have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This doesn't come because you've earned it. This wasn't because Peter was an apostle. Over in Acts chapter 3 where he raised this man up and he went walking and leaping and praising God with them into the temple. Peter later said in Acts chapter 3, I believe it's around verse 16, man and brethren, why do you look on us as though we by our own power, our holiness had made this man to walk? But it's the name of Jesus through faith in his name that has accomplished this. The apostle Peter made it very clear. It wasn't his righteousness. It wasn't because he was an apostle that this person was raised up. It was the name of Jesus and faith in his name. It was faith that caused this. And Peter here says that this faith came through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, not because of his performance. And so if faith can do all of this, then you know what? You can do all of these things. And if it comes through the righteousness of God, not because a person is an apostle, not because of their holiness, if it's a gift of God and it came just as a part of salvation, then every one of you who have been born again have raising from the dead power on the inside of you. You have the faith to believe that. And if you haven't yet seen that manifest, one of the reasons is because you first of all don't know that you've got it. You don't know what you've got. Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, Paul prayed and he says, I pray that the communication of your faith would become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Before you can begin to use it and see your faith be effectual, you first of all have to acknowledge that you have it. You have to quit going by just what you feel and recognize that there's a spirit on the inside of you that has been born again. And the fruit of that spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. You do have faith in your spirit. God has already given you everything it takes. You don't need something else. You need to start receiving what is already yours. And you do have the faith of God living on the inside of you. That is nearly too good to be true news. Oh, that's powerful. You know, I've got more to share on this. I'm going to continue on my program tomorrow, so I encourage you to listen in then. And also, let me once again stress that you get these materials. I believe that this will change your life. I am absolutely sold on it. And I encourage you to please listen to the announcer and then call or write today and receive these materials. Andrew's four-part teaching titled Spirit, Soul, and Body is available in a CD album or it's available in a DVD album as seen on TV. Ask for T1027 and be sure to specify CD or DVD when you make a gift of 13 pounds or more. The third teaching in the audio CD album is also available for a donation. We encourage everyone to send a gift, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this third CD free of charge. Request teaching TK93 when you write or call and we'll be pleased to send it to you. Spirit, Soul, and Body, the book, is also available when you send a gift to the work of this ministry. Request T318 when you write, call, or go to our website. 
For the very first time, this teaching is available in a companion study guide for a gift of £17.50 or more. Included is a CD-ROM that allows you to duplicate any resources needed for each lesson. Request study guide T418 when you contact the ministry. The very best way to reach us is through our website. You can order ministry materials online 24 hours a day at awme.net. Or you can use your credit card to order by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. Again, that's 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours extend from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If the lines are jammed, remember you can go to our website and there's no fee for reaching us through the internet. If you prefer to write us, our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. We hope to hear from you today. I'd like to encourage you to go visit our website. We have that address on your screen, and I tell you, we have one of the most um, powerful websites of anything I've ever seen. I get comments about how user-friendly it is. I have hundreds of my teaching available for free downloads. And there's literally been people's lives saved by having all of this teaching material available to them free of charge. We have our living commentary there. I have about, I think it's eight years or more of our television programs that you can view right there on the website. We have about 10 or 11 years worth of my radio programs there. It's just a wealth of information, so please join us on our website. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He will be in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the 25th Annual U.S. Ministers Conference, September 29th through October 3rd. He'll also be in Gosforth, Newcastle-upon-Tyne in the U.K. on October 18th through the 19th and in Buxton, England for the annual AWME Ministers Conference, October 20th through the 22nd. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. I want to let you know that on July the 20th through the 23rd, I'm going to be ministering in South Africa. And I'm really excited to be coming back. This will be only my second trip there. On the 20th, I'm going to be ministering at Spirit Word Ministries. This is a Sunday afternoon service. And then on Monday through Wednesday, Arthur Minchez, and I know that that's not the way you pronounce his last name, but Arthur's a very good friend of mine, and he is South African. We're going to be holding a meeting on Monday through Wednesday with morning and evening services. And it's just going to be a great time in the Lord. So remember, this is July the 20th at Spirit Word Ministries. And then the 21st through the 23rd, we'll be using their facilities for our own conference there. It'll be called the Grace and Faith Conference.